Well, thank you, Brian, and a good morning. Uh, thank you for inviting me here today. Uh, I'm very glad to be able to uh, share with you on uh, Capo's offshore and marine journey and how we have managed to innovate and develop high-tech mobile offshore drilling units that have become industry benchmark today. Now, first, let me very quickly run through uh, so that you can understand a little bit about our organization. Uh, Capo Offshore and Marine is a wholly owned subsidiary of Capo Corporation. Capo Corporation is a, a conglomerate in Singapore, which has business, uh, key businesses in offshore and marine, infrastructure, and property. Now, this is our suites of innovative solutions for all frontiers. And it ranged from uh, specialized offshore vessels to mobile offshore drilling units and uh, floating production systems. Like all successful organizations, we have a vision to aspire to. At Cap Offshore and Marine, we seek to be the provider of choice and partner of solution in the offshore and marine industry. And we aim to achieve this customer satisfaction through, uh, customer satisfaction through technological leadership and in building a people-orientated organization. Cap Offshore and Marine is today one of the world's largest offshore and marine group with a global network of 20 yards. The group has three key divisions, offshore, ship repair and conversion, and specialized shipbuilding. The offshore segment is led by Kepa Fells. Uh, we are world leader in the design and construction of jacka bricks and semi-submersibles. Uh, we have built more than half of all jacka bricks and a third of all semi-submersible rigs in the world since the year 2000. Leading the ship repair and com uh, conversion segment is Kepa Shipyard. Kepa Shipyard specializes in repair, conversion, specialized modification work for a diverse range of vessels, including tankers, LNG, LPG, uh, container ships, and cruise ships. Uh, it is also the world leader in FESO conversion, having completed 105 large-scale projects since 1982. On average, Kepler Shipyard repairs about 400 ships a year. In the specialized shipbuilding segment, we have Kepler Singh Marine. Kepler Singh Marine has 40 years of experience in design and building of tugs and specialized offshore vessels. Uh, built. And uh, today, we have constructed more than 400 ships of diverse type and sophistication level for a global customer base. Now, as I said earlier, we have a network of more than 20 yards we span across the world. Except for West Africa, we are present in all major oil and gas producing regions. It is part of our near customer, near market strategy to further foster relationship with our customers and their customers wherever they are. And leveraging on the synergy of our network of yards enables us to provide cost efficiency and meets the increasing requirement from governments for local content. Today, we employ over 30,000 employees in 16 countries. We galvanize and bind our global workforce to a common set of beliefs and core values, from a can-do spirit to empowering the people and fostering teamwork. By instilling a strong value system, we have created a resilient global team that delivers on the company's promises. Our presence in the United States is represented by Kepa M. Fels, located in Brownsville, Texas. Kepa M. Fels is the most well-equipped offshore yards today in the Gulf of Mexico. Since its establishment in 1990, Kepa M. Fels has grown a solid track record and capability in the construction, refurbishment, and conversion of a complete range of mobile drilling units and platforms. It is currently undertaking uh, two ma major conversion of semi submersible rig, one for Diamond Offshore and the other one for Transocean, and we are building two jacka bricks, new jacka bricks for Mexico. And interestingly, Kepa and Fels was also the birthplace of Kepa Offshore and Marine's hallmark jacka design, the B-Class. Today, the B-Class is a standard for non-harsh environment jacka There are 36 units that have been delivered and 20 units on order. So in one single design, there were 56 units that Kepo has produced, will be producing and pro have produced and will be producing. 
Now, Kaplan-Fels has a very difficult infancy. And since this is a, a Texas uh, a company, uh, and then this is a Texas audience, uh, and maybe I can give you a little bit of background. In, the, in 1990, you know, after all the due diligence done by our lawyers, and uh, we were advised that we are clear to buy into uh, this company. So we bought 60% of the stake in a company called Ellison McDermott, which was a small little facility in Brownsville, Texas. And I think two weeks after we bought into it, we were sued for $650 million. Now, the basis of the lawsuit was that a company called CMC uh, claimed that we have tortiously interfered in the deal that they had with uh, Ellison McDermott. That uh, by, by, by capital buying into Ellison McDermott, actually we have deprived them of the opportunity to own a series of jacker bricks, which in their lifetime would earn them a profit of $650 million. So after much posturing, actually, uh, CMC actually gave us an offer and would settle for $10 million. But we felt that it would send the wrong message to the market for us to settle this lawsuit. And uh, we think that it will probably invite more lawsuits in the future. So we decided to contest it in court. And we spent more than you know, a couple of million dollars and 18 months fighting that case in Texas. And of course, during this period, there were such dark clouds hanging over our head we were unable to develop the yard, but we have existing contracts that we have to fulfill. And so we went about diligently uh, fulfilling all our existing obligations. Now finally, after going through the whole line yard of jury selection, uh, discoveries, and hearing in the courts, uh, we, we won the case. We were awarded $100,000 damage, which I think today we still haven't been able to collect that money. <laughs> the, the question of whether it's time to close and withdrawal from the U.S. was obviously posted to us. And, uh, but there were many of us who felt that, you know, uh, that we should not be derailed by such a bad ex uh, ex experience and that our near market, near customer strategy should continue. And so we persevered. We bought out the minority shareholders. And today, Capital Fels employed 3,000 employees. And we are the biggest private sector employer in Cameron County in South Texas. So I thought that, that may be interesting to a Texas audience here. Now, we are also in Brazil, and Capo has a significant presence in Brazil since 2000. We transformed a defunct shipyard in Angra do Reis, uh, in a, a, a place about two, two hours' drive south of Rio de Janeiro, into the most comprehensive offshore and marine facility in Latin America. Between 2005 and 2011, among other projects, Braswell's actually constructed three major production semi submersible uh, each of them costing roughly about 1.4 to 1.5 billion US dollars. In 2011, we delivered our third member floating production unit uh, called the P56, and this is the first FPU that was completely built in Brazil, and is an example of the technology expertise and execution capability built up by our yard in Braswells. Today, Braswells' backlog includes a tension lake platform, upgrading of two uh, large drill ships, integration of five FPSO, and building five semi submersible deep water, ultra deep water rig. And we have a workforce of about 8,000. In Europe, Keppel Verom operates the comprehensive yards in Rotterdam featuring modern facilities, including one of Europe's largest dry dock. The yard has direct access to the North Sea and is well located to repair and upgrade rigs that are operating in that region. Since its inauguration in November of 2010, our Capo Nakilat facility in Qatar has been ramming up its operation rapidly. And since in the inauguration, which is about two years ago, uh, NCOM has completed more than 90 projects to date, including work on 40 LNG vessels and seven jackups. The global financial crisis of 2008-2009 has affected capital uh, order book quite severely, as you can see in the chart. But fortunately, the market recovered quite strongly, and in 2011, we actually received uh, record order of US 8.1 billion, but most of those orders were for uh, shallow water jack And in 2012, we kept this up and we actually secured 
$8.25 billion. And uh, in this case, the bulk of it actually come from the deep water, building deep water semi submersible and FPSO projects. Cap Offshore and Marine has uh, a very good track record for project management and execution. We have delivered our project on time and within budget, and the group ex focused extensively on HSE and productivity in its pursuit of execution excellence. As you can see, in 2013, Cap Offshore and Marine will be delivering 21 mobile offshore drilling units and five FPSO projects. And this will be a record in terms of completions and delivery for our group. Now, let me perhaps give you some historical background as to how we came and where we are going today. Okay, we started as a Keppel Shipyard. And Keppel Shipyard is a ship repair department of the Singapore Harbour Board in 1968. Actually, it was a government entity. And uh, the government decides to privatise and corporatise the company, and so we become Keppel Shipyard, which is a private limited company. In the early 70s, the company saw the potential to diversify and capture growth in other marine-related areas. Oil and gas exploration was gaining traction in Asia, and there was a need to build relevant equipment and drilling rigs. As you can see in the slide, this is how the shipyard looks like in the 70s and 80s, and early 80s. And uh, we were practically building on the mud banks of the river. Now, this was how we built rigs then and uh, how we launched uh, Jacob Rigs. So you can see that we do it panel by panel, and actually we actually have to have launching ways that extend into the river, and we launch the unit. Now, this is how we do it today. Okay, we are building large blocks. We blast and paint those blocks in environmental-friendly uh, controlled buildings. Uh, we reject, erect large blocks using gantry cranes and floating cranes. Today we own three shear lake floating cranes, 1,600 ton, 3,200 30, 30, ton, and a 5,000 ton. The 5,000 ton will be ready actually in the middle of this year. So we built jackal breaks in, large, in, in the large dry dock that we have, and you may not see very clearly on the right hand side, the bottom right hand side, but there are actually five jackal breaks in the dry dock building at the same time. And this is how we float those dry dock out of the, uh, the jack up out of dry dock. And after floating out, we actually um, position them at the key site and we continue the building process. The global offshore and marine industry was hit by a downturn in 1983. Some of you may remember. The effect lasted for more than a decade. Many yards around the world were forced to shut down, and the local marine sector was labelled a sunset industry by our government. But we stayed resilient, taking a long-term view of the business, retaining our main workforce, and preserving our core competence. In fact, we took the opportunity to absorb some of the key manpower and facility from closed-down yards. In 1986, we bought over a former Mitsubishi ship repair yards in Singapore that has closed down, and converted it into an offshore rig building yard. We bought key equipment at a fraction of a cost from yards in Europe that were closing down. So with prudent financial management, we were able to ride the cycle and build up our capability. Now all this while, a key focus for us was to position ourselves as a solution provider to meet the market needs. This has been the case as early as the 80s, where we incrementally grew our competence. Since then, we have made significant investment in R&D, new facilities, manpower and training. As you can see from this slide, we have evolved from a pure contractor building third-party design to become a designer and builder of rigs for new frontiers. Now, we have, let me touch a little bit more on how we have developed our technology and our expertise. We were the first yard in Singapore to introduce computerization in 1981, which was at its infancy then. We broke away from reliance on labor-intensive methods. Mini computers and CAD CAM software were a reality then. Now, during the 80s and 90s, there were only two companies in the world that supplies critical jacking systems used to elevate the rigs, and we were totally reliant on them. 
To give us better supply control and cost saving in the rig building process, we developed our own proprietary jacking, uh, jacking and fixation system. In building to our design, we had to persuade and convince clients to trust our design. The strong relationship that we have built up and the integrity that we display in our business dealings put us in good states. Today, these jackups and fixation systems are key components used in all Kepo's design jackup rigs, and we have a dedicated manufacturing facility in Japan to produce this and ensure that we have intellectual property control over our design. This constant communication with our client has enabled us to customize design to their specific requirement rather than building uh, generic design. Rather than being designed in theories, we ensure that our designs were buildable and practical during in-service operation. As shown in the slide, we are now able to have complete project visualization through our full 3D modeling review. From a full 3D modeling model, a 3D model, which we actually construct before we even start production, we can now extract a lot of information out of it. We have 3D draw, 2D drawings for shop drawings and so on, build up materials, do interference check, improve the execution plan, and better control of the project overall. The design and engineering group runs the company's global engineering operation, coordinating and directing the design, engineering, and research work. We set up our Houston office in 2002 to look into cutting-edge technology, foresights, and looking for business opportunity. Capital today has over 1,500 engineers from different cultures, from India, China, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Norway, Holland, Brazil, US, Mexico, and the Philippines. Our technology division provides us focus and cross-sharing of research and resources. We view technology as a differentiator. R&D is spearheaded by our Cap and Offshore Marine Technology Center, and product development and commercialization is taken by three key units, Offshore Technology Development, Deep Water Technology Group, Marine Technology Development. And we place a big emphasis on process technology, which we aim at product and improving our productivity in all our yards in the world. To differentiate ourselves from our competitor, it was important to have proprietary technology. As you can see in the slides, we, have now, own, we now own a suite of jack-up rig design for application in various environments. Our technology also extends to deep water floater solutions. With the push to explore oil and gas in deeper water, Kappa Offshore and Marine has successfully launched the DSS semi submersible series through our deep water technology group in partnership with marine structure consultants. In the slide, you can see our DSS series of semi submersibles Augmenting our proprietary semi submersible design, we have recently developed two new designs the DSS-51 HG, HG standing, stand for harsh environment, and DSS-60 HG to meet the demand for higher variable deck load and drilling operations in harsher environment of the North Sea and also the Eastern Canadian water. Now being confident in our own, the strength of our own product, we sometimes take a stick in the, pro, in the, in the product which also supports the growth of our customer. This has also helped our designer, our design to enter the market, prove itself and become an industry standard. So we as a company do selectively co-invest in new product as part of our strategy. To, to stay ahead of the curve, we continue to break frontiers and expand the breadth and depth of our solution by applying core competent, competence to new products. In the slide, you can see that uh, there's an offshore wind turbine installation vessel. This is our Kappos design, and it is the first vessel that we have constructed and was delivered last year in October, and is now working very well in the German sector of the North Sea. 
Capital is constantly challenging you know, new frontiers. For the North Sea, we have delivered three Capital Fells N-Class checkup rigs to Rovan, a Houston-based US drilling contractor, and the rigs are performing very well in the North Sea. We have also launched the Capital Super A checkup, checkup design last year, and we have won orders from ENSCO and, and Discovery Offshore to construct five such units. We are also constructing three of the biggest jackup in the world for MERS drilling, and they are worth a total of about US $1.6 billion. Besides high spec and high capacity rigs, we designed and built accommodation semis. Our track record for accommodation semi with improve with the order from, the, uh, from uh, Flotel, which ordered a fourth unit just recently. And this latest unit will be able to work all year round in the Norwegian sector of the North Sea. Because we are quite positive on the long-term prospect of the niche semi submersible accommodation market, and we actually took a 47% stake in the company called Flotel International. As we look ahead at developing solutions for new frontiers, Capo and M and ConocoPhillips are jointly designing a first of its kind ice-worthy jackup rigs to operate in the Arctic seas. The design, which we aim to develop by end of 2013, will have features specially customized for efficient Arctic operation. We are also designing and uh, developing a new generation high-spec drill ship design that will be cost-effective and competitive solution capable of drilling in ultra-deep water, in high-temperature and high-pressure wells, in the, in the post-Macondo era. So the lessons learned from the Macondo incident will be very much incorporated into this design. Going forward, we will use our technology to maintain our leadership position in complex conversion. We undertook the first conversion of the world first FPSO in 1982, and has since completed more than 106 large-scale conversion. We were also the first to convert an LNG vessel into an FSRU. FSRU stands for Floating Storage Regasification Unit, and have since completed three such projects. And in the top site and turret design and construction, we are actually the world number one fabricator of turrets, having fabricated more than 60 of them, including some of the largest turrets ever fabricated and installed in the world. And some of these turrets weigh more than 8,000 tonnes. Through MTD, Kepler Singh Marine has also developed a suite of design for specialised ships. It is interesting to note that we have built icebreakers and icebreaking vessels for Lukoil for use in the Arctic and sub-Arctic region for use in the Varende field in Russia. Now, to meet the needs of our customer around the world, we leverage the synergy of our global yards to come up with cost-effective solutions. In completing the first member floating production unit built for Brazil, the P-52, the low house was built in Singapore and it was towed to Brazil and was joined the, in Brazil with the top site being fabricated there. The mating process was a challenging and complex operation and regarded as an engineering feat. It has enabled us to transfer our technology expertise to our Brazilian yards. Here in the picture, you can see the lower hull built in Singapore. We transport the lower hull all the way to Brazil. We built the top site in Brazil, in our shipyard over there, in a very innovative way on a barge. Then we submerged the lower hull to 50 meters the four corners that you see there is actually the top of this low hull, and we float the top side over it, and we deballast the low hull to catch the top side. As you can see, the, the supporting barge at the far the, uh, at, at the back that has been moved, and that's how we complete the P52 projects. And this is one of the world's largest, having have a production capacity of about 200,000 barrels per day. Now, there's another important venture overseas that 
probably warrant some high, highlight here. And it is in the landlocked Caspian Sea. The region holds a high reserve of oil and gas, but accessibility by, by sea is restricted to the narrow Don, Wogadon Canal. So in 1997, our customer Transocean asked us to find a solution to bring an offshore rig into the Caspian Sea. But of course, it's not possible to transit the canal because it's only 15 meter wide. So we needed a facility in the Caspian Sea, and this has led us to convert a supply base in Baku, Azerbaijan, into a shipyard. So with ingenuity and design and engineering, we devised the jack-up drilling rigs to be partially built in Singapore and in Baku, and then was completely assembled and uh, delivered by our shipyard in, in the Caspian. Now, the success of this project subsequently led us to uh, three major projects, a semi submersible rig, a production semi, and an ice class floating storage offloading vessel that was built in two longitudinal sections before joining together in Baku. So again, some of these components has to travel a long way, a, uh, 13,000 miles, uh, 13,000 kilometers journey from Singapore to Baku, Azerbaijan. Now over the years, we have constantly improved our rig building methodology. Today is like assembly line in the manufacturing facilities. We have spent no effort and resources in optimizing our operations and maximizing our facilities. Now this will enable us to deliver the 21 jack-up rigs in 2013 compared to our previous record of 16. We collaborated with like-minded partners to reduce R&D costs and leverage each other's expertise to develop a big true for the market. Kepa has also been working with schools and universities to increase the knowledge and the technology capital in the industry. The Kepa Professorship in Offshore, Ocean and Marine Technology in the National University of Singapore is one such initiative. Kepa is also setting up a technology center in Brazil where we can tap on the resources there. We are collaborating with National University of Singapore, the University of Rio de Janeiro and the University of Sao Paulo to work together with SAMPES, which is the Research Institute of Petrobras to work on offshore solutions for Brazil's pre salt field. We take a long-term view in the development of our employees. We empowered our talents to give their best to long-term skill training, mentorships, career planning, and job rotation. For example, more than 80% of our general managers have worked in at least three different departments, and we have given them exposure to oversee operations across the globe. We are also striving to pro pro provide ample leadership and technical training through developmental opportunities within Kepa College and Kepa o &M Group Training Center. Let me end by saying that the industry will need new technology and innovations. We at Kepa are single-minded in ensuring that we stay competitive and grow in a sustainable way. This is how we have succeeded in engineering offshore drilling and production vessels. Thank you very much for your time. Sure. Thank you very much. Um, my congratulations. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. right. <laughs> go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, so my congratulations on your growth of the years. My question uh, has to do with competitiveness of U.S. I notice you are very strong in Brazil. Obviously, Singapore, home base, Europe. Uh, tell me about competitiveness of the U.S. in terms of engineering talent. Uh, people, you know, how competitive in terms of taxes, regulation, et cetera. So where do you see the center, the center of your synergy going forward? Is it in other countries? And uh, so why not U.S.? Okay. So give me a sense of where the U.S. Sure. is in terms of competitive environment. Okay, we Thank have you. To, when we look at the offshore industry, we have to look at uh, different products, okay? In the shipbuilding product, you know, where you have uh, supply boats and, uh, you know, and, and there's regulation in the U.S. where you have to be a Jones Act. And in, in a way, it is protected. And I think uh, for Jones Act ships that need to be built, I think the U.S. Uh, shipyards uh, obviously 
has some uh, captured market. And, uh, but in the drilling rigs, drilling rigs are quite international. And uh, because of that, then the competition from Singapore yards, from Chinese yards, from Korean yards, uh, is quite severe. And today, I think the US has lost its competitiveness in that field, in that segment. Now, even for our yard in, uh, in, in, in uh, Brownsville, uh, I mentioned early on that we are building two jackup rigs for, for Mexico. And one of the reasons why they were able to secure those rigs was because of uh, Exim Bank financing. Uh, because uh, some of these customers, you know, will need financing. And I think the U.S. offer Exim Bank financing to them. And Exim Bank financing is not just project financing for that project during the construction. It's actually financing projects, uh, giving them a longer term of uh, repayment, which is attractive to some uh, customers. Uh, I, I think that we find that the, the, our Mexican customers find it very attractive to do that. And so this is, this is uh, something that we hope will continue for our facility in Brownsville. But if you were to take that away and you look at cost competitiveness of uh, uh, yards in, Browns, uh, in, in the U.S., I think today you know, most of the activity has shifted to uh, Singapore, China, and the Korea. <clears throat> My question has to do with the jackup rigs in yes. the Arctic. Uh, you know, there's a big discussion uh, how useful they are uh, when they are frozen and, and the ice may actually crush them into pieces. So I would like to get your sense okay. how you envision designing them so they can withstand these right. environmental actually, difficulties. Actually, you know, the, the, the requirement of, uh, of the operating environment, you know, is usually provided by our customer. Uh, we have competence in design, but we do not <coughs> understand sometimes the requirement of the area of operation. So in collaborating with ConocoPhillips, ConocoPhillips actually provide us the background. So we had, this has been a, at least a two or three years collaboration, and uh, we are still in the design stage. And that's partly because there's a lot of consideration for uh, Arctic uh, operation. In the Arctic, where they, are, where they want to operate in, in the Chukchi and the Belford area, actually it's not very deep water. So, so a jackup will be very suitable. But the question is, there's only two to three months in a year that you can operate in that environment. So the driver behind it is that they want to have a rig that is very efficient, that can go in in that three months and be able to drill as much and as quickly as possible. So that becomes the constraint you know, or, or rather the parameter that we have to work within. So we have to look at the hydraulic system. We need rigs that are very powerful, you know, that can drill fast. At the same time, we must be able to withstand loose ice, small iceberg that may be coming along. So the design of the jackup around the lakes, you know, where the lakes that support the platform, we need to look at how to protect those, those areas and how to strengthen those areas. But it is not for all year round operation. Okay. Okay. So Thank in that you. sense, I think uh, you know some people may think that Arctic rig goes there and they work all year round, but this is actually for the open window in the summer, which is a very short period. Okay. Thank you very much.